A new topic that a lot of people have questions on is fasting. And an especially common question is how to break your fast. Now, a lot of fitness experts and gurus have swooped in on this topic and they've started answering this question in some pretty misleading ways. And I gotta say, I hate it when things are overcomplicated. So in today's video, I'd like to simplify this question and give you the bottom line truth so you know exactly what to do and what not to do when breaking your fast. And honestly, it's a lot easier than you think. First, let's all agree that fasting is supposed to give you more freedom and flexibility with your diet. So going over the top and obsessing over the precise amount of carbohydrates, proteins, fats, your insulin levels, your salt intake, what food you're allowed to eat, what you're not allowed to eat, having to drink bone broth, MCT oil, apple cider vinegar, all that kind of stuff, like that kills the whole premise of fasting. It's supposed to be a stress-free way of eating. Also, one big mistake that a lot of people make when fasting is that they continue to try to calorie restrict after their fast is over. And I'm shocked to see some experts advocating for that as well. So I have news for you guys, and hopefully some of these experts are listening. If you haven't already heard, your willpower is a finite resource, meaning you will run out of willpower. And fasting for a portion of the day already takes a substantial amount of your willpower away. People that continue to be super restrictive and stressed out after they break their fast have a higher likelihood of binge eating because they drain all of their willpower. So with that in mind, I'm gonna give you the very basic things that you have to be aware of when breaking your fast. And I promise you, this is all you need to know. The number one thing you need to know is not some magical food that will miraculously help you burn more fat after your fast is over, no, the number one logical thing that you need to be aware of is binge eating. And the second thing that won't even affect most of you, but I'll go over it anyway, is digestion. That's all you need to know. See you guys next week. Just kidding. Let's get the digestion stuff out of the way so I can teach you how to never binge eat again after fasting. Your digestive system will most likely reduce enzyme production and affect the mucus lining in your stomach on a long-term fast. I'm sure everyone's heard of the phrase, if you don't use it, you lose it, and that applies to your digestive system as well. Your digestive abilities, in a sense, will experience a sort of atrophy. However, digestion won't typically be affected by most fasting protocols. That's right, most of you that are obsessing over whether to buy organic bone broth or regular bone broth to break your fast are wasting your time. Whether you're following intermittent fasting, the 5-2 diet, the warrior diet, or even the one meal a day diet, your digestive system should remain fine. Only after a long-term fast, usually lasting three to seven days, will you experience this effect on your digestive system. Again, most of you are not fasting that long. You're simply skipping breakfast and maybe lunch. But if you do wind up doing a long-term fast where you fast for a few days, there's a very simple solution to resetting your digestive system. Reintroduce food slowly, starting with food that's easier to digest, meaning you can't go from fasting for seven days to eating Pizza Hut because you will definitely need to take a That's it. It's really not rocket science, guys. Foods that are easiest to digest include things like, yes, bone broths soups, juices, and pureed fruit, white rice, mashed potatoes, and raw fruit are all easy to digest as well. So you can begin incorporating these easy to digest foods the first day or two after breaking a long fast. By day three, you should be okay to start consuming most natural real food, including protein sources. Don't add a crazy amount of variety until you feel comfortable with basic protein options like chicken, fish, and eggs. Again, most of you aren't on long-term fasts and are instead doing short fasting intervals. So most of you don't even have to worry about this. So what's something that most of you will have to deal with, even if you're on a shorter term fast? Well, the number one thing is overeating, especially overeating high glycemic carbohydrates and salt. With salt, the main thing you have to worry about is bloating. The good news about bloating is that it's temporary and it does not lead to fat storage. It's really just excess water retention, which to somebody like me isn't a big deal, but for you, if you have to be on the beach or at some pool party the next day, it's something you may wanna be aware of. The bigger issue, however, is over consuming high glycemic carbs, especially simple carbs, because unlike most of the nonsense that you hear about magical foods that are gonna help you break your fast better, too many high glycemic foods after a fast can lead to gaining some body fat. 
The reason for this is because you will be more insulin sensitive after a fast, and you will also be hungrier after not eating for a portion of the day in general. Insulin is a hormone that helps get nutrients into your cells, including into your fat cells, especially when blood sugar levels and insulin levels spike way up. So the point is that you wanna keep insulin as low as you can without taxing your willpower. So how do we do this? Do we listen to the experts that advocate restricting and avoiding all those carbs that you really wanna eat? No, because that's the equivalent of telling yourself not to picture a purple elephant. What you're doing is you're counting down the days to a full out binge, in which case you might as well have eaten whatever carbs you wanted. Instead, you wanna allow yourself to have even the simple carbohydrates that you're craving, but only after you satisfied your hunger. It's like making a deal with yourself. You can get to the good stuff, but only after filling your stomach up with low glycemic nutritious options. Start with some steamed or sauteed vegetables, not only because they're super nutritious, but also because they fill your stomach up with a very small amount of calories. Remember, the ideal diet is one in which your body tells you it's time to stop eating, not one in which your mind has to tell you it's time to stop eating. Because remember, whatever you resist persists. So start your meal with one and a half cups of mostly green vegetables, then move on to one or two pieces of raw fruit. If you're following a ketogenic fasting protocol, then stick to berries for fruit, and then move on to something that's high in fat, like half an avocado. But for the rest of you, almost all fruit offers a very low calorie way to satisfy your hunger while continuing to fill up your stomach. After the fruit and the veggies, you would wanna move on to your protein source and your natural low glycemic source of carbohydrates. Low glycemic sources of carbohydrates include things like brown rice, yams, and even baked potatoes will be absolutely fine after a fast. Make sure you finish all the protein on your plate before finishing your carbs. Now, after all of that, you can finally move on to the good stuff, which let's be honest, a lot of you started fasting to be able to enjoy your meals more. So once again, you don't wanna punish your good behavior all day with bland, boring food that you don't wanna eat. Rewarding your hard work will pay off psychologically speaking, and it'll help you avoid binging in the long term. By saving the higher glycemic food and the treats for after you've already eaten your veggies, your fruit, your protein source, and your healthy carbs, your body may already be full before you ever even get to your cravings. And again, that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for your body to tell you when to stop eating. Even if you do end up consuming junk food after all the high fiber, high protein, and the healthy fats that you've already eaten, you won't be able to eat much of it before being full. That's it guys, I know that this approach may sound super simple, but that's the point of fasting. It's not supposed to be super complicated. You don't have to eat magical foods, magical drinks, or oils to experience the benefits of fasting. To reiterate, the main thing, pretty much the only thing most of you have to be conscious of is overeating. If you take one tip out of this video, just eat a bunch of veggies when breaking your fast. Just doing that will drastically reduce the chances of you binging out. Don't overcomplicate fasting, don't fix what's not broken, and I hope this video helps you, and if you want further help and assistance, and you wanna take your diet and your workout plan to the next level, try my six week challenge, where most of my clients are losing an average of 20 pounds or 5% body fat in just 42 days. We also teach you how to maintain these habits for the long term and give you a coach to make sure that the whole process is smooth and sustainable. To find out how you can get the challenge for free right now, visit my website that you can access by clicking the link below. Or you can visit my site directly by going to www.gravitytransformation.com. I hope I've simplified your diet struggles with this video and I'll see you guys next time.